hello welcome to Aussie Wrist Watch I'm Jess uh, this is my humble channel thank you as always for tuning in uh, very quickly uh, thank you TGV from the Urban Gentry um, lots of people actually sent me notes saying that he gave me a shout out in one of his most recent videos I love him uh, he's such a nice guy and uh, I was I mean I just love his channel it's one of the reasons I do this channel so thank you very much TGV um, much respect and really appreciate the shout out today I am going Aussie that's right we're gonna talk about another Aussie micro brand which I've come to love since I've discovered it and I'll tell you why in this video and it's Borzell and uh, there's a couple of watches in their new collection that they've just launched or launched at least in the last couple of months and it's a classic field watch which if you've watched this channel in the past you'll know I don't own any field watches but I really really love them um, and I think it's because of the simplic simplicity of them but we'll get into that and you know I love a dive watch and they've got a dive watch in this collection now there's a fabulous story to these watches which I'm going to go into but first, uh, the classic field comes in two colors and we're gonna talk about the classic field in detail today. And then I'm gonna talk about the Sydney Diver in a separate video, but they have similar origins. Today I'm wearing their classic field in beige. I'm in love with this watch. Something about the beige dial, which just uh, I think is unbelievably cool. Uh, and the other watch is black and you'll see in the video and the photos and I'll grab it for you. Now, I've got plastic on all of these because these are graciously been lent to me by Christoph and Aaron, who are the gents of Borzell. And um, and yeah, I, don't, I didn't want to take any of the plastic or anything off these watches, so I'm just like, but that's the black one. And I'm gonna talk about why it's so black very shortly. Um, but it's such a classic military style watch, this one. I also get very much drawn to this for that reason. But let's talk a little bit about Borzell first. So Christo or Christophe uh, is the founder and he's French. I think he's French Swiss. Apologies if I haven't got that right. I know you won't mind because he's like the nicest guy I think I've ever met. Uh, and he's from a finance background and used to work in consulting and for all intents and purposes, was very successful at that and just had a passion for watches. So eventually he took the plunge and went into watchmaking and started his brand, Bozell. Um, and this company is very quintessentially Australian, notwithstanding the French Swiss connection. Uh, there are elements in his previous models uh, of his watches from Sydney, for example, there was one one watch they did some time back uh, that had bits of the tile of the uh, Sydney Opera House in the crown. They've had a watch that's got, um, you know, pieces of earth from famous places around Australia, likewise sand, etc. These ones actually have dirt from uh, a military base in the US where the US Army trained the, I think it's the, the Airborne. And I'll talk about why that is, because these field watches are a US Army endorsed um, product in particular, and the dive watch as well, which we'll talk about in that video, but the black models are made to the specifications of the US military, which includes, for example, having to have um, clear indices to be able to read, but no other no other branding or, or, or anything on there. So Borzell and the 24 hour time is actually on this dial, but it's kind of in a gray that you cannot see and that's why. So um, if you're kind of looking at this watch online or if you've seen it in person and you're like, oh, it looks a little bit plain. Well, that's by design uh, and to meet the specifications of the US Army. But I wanna talk about how this little collaboration between an Aussie watch company and the behemoth of the US Army came about. And it's got to do with Aaron Coote, the CEO of Borzell, who, uh, what I understand, kind of like spends time between the US and here, and in particular in LA, and noticed there's a big problem with 
veterans over there in terms of them, you know, they're being homeless, they don't have, they don't have work, they've got PTSD, you know, and supporting them. And he kind of had this idea of, of this watch and he wanted to do a collaboration with the US Army because he wanted to involve veterans in the process and he wanted the US Army to sort of endorse that. And so like every good entrepreneur, he simply asks the question. And for some, I don't know, for me it feels like some quad of a small miracle. The email he sent to the Department of Defense happened to go to like the right person at the right time who happened to say yes. That's how this collaboration came about. The watches themselves were de designed by a team of veterans, which I think is fantastic. Along, of course, with Christo, who's who's the designer of um, the watches for Borzell more generally, but he also talks about the fact that there was 12, I think eight men, four females on this team that designed these watches who happened to be veterans, which I think is outstanding. Another interesting part of that is that they're actually assembled in the US by veterans. Uh, so it's very much an Aussie US collaboration, this watch, which I think is absolutely fantastic. And Stolen Co actually organized the assembly. They're in Ohio. They're a massive American, um, I think, sort of watchmaker or jeweler. Could have that slightly wrong, but, um, and they have a program where they hire veterans. And so veterans put these watches together over there. And I love that. I absolutely love that. But like I said, the, the classic field in black is the US Army um, collaboration, if we can call it that. So there's, there's particular specifications that the, the US Army have, like they actually have guidelines about designing watches and what they can wear and can't wear in their regs. Uh, and so the watch is designed to those specifications, including um, the, the height of the watch, for example, the size of the watch. Uh, and like I said, on the black one, which is the official collab, uh, making sure that there's no brands visible, etc. Uh, yeah, I mean, I just, I think it's such a cool, such a cool idea to do this. The watch itself is 38 millimeters case size. It's 11.95 millimeter thickness. So as I've said to you, it's on the thicker side of things for sure. In talking with Christo, um, I think his desire would have been to have a, a slimmer profile, but that was actually a requirement under the US regs. So they've had to comply with that. 45 millimeter lug to lug, 22 millimeter lugs, 100 meter water resistant, it's got hacking automatic scratch resistant sapphire crystal with five layers of anti-reflective coating. It's 24 hour time dial center, 500 pieces. Like I said, there's soil from US military forts in here, which I think is a nice little touch. It's, it's the, call it the trademark of Borzell anyway to do that, where they put elements of, in the past Australia into their watch. Uh, great little gimmick, but um, a, a fabulous one nonetheless. These are the straps, it comes with two. So I'm wearing this on the NATO strap uh, and it's a elastic sort of NATO. I must admit, I, I have been given this by time and tide and I'm still trying to figure out how to put it on my watch because you know, you guys know me, I'm a little bit useless with this stuff. So, um, uh, <laughs> Borzell have done this strap on these watches, but luckily they're already on the watch and I figured out how to use them and it's super comfortable to wear. Uh, and because it's such a thin NATO, it sits really well. It doesn't have the problem of a nylon NATO strap for me where they sit really high on the lugs. It comes with a re recycled material strap as well. So it you can swap over from the NATO, which I also quite like the look of. Movement, there's a Seiko, what is it? Um, NH38, I think, and two down crown, uh, which I've given it a couple of goes. It's, it's pretty good. It's pretty responsive in terms of how it works. It doesn't have the double click because we don't need to change the date. So it's, it's perfect. Pull it out once, move it, change the time, you're done. It's great. Um, like I said, sapphire crystal, um, case back is sandblasted surgical uh, grade stainless steel. 
and the US Army logo is engraved on the back. Now, I wasn't really able to get a picture of that because these straps are already on the watch. I didn't want to sort of, I didn't want to take any of that stuff off or anything. But on the beige, it's not because it's not the US Army um, collaboration, but it's on the black field watch. And we'll talk about it in the other video, but it's also on the Sydney Diver black. Um, because they are both collaborations with the army. Finally, one little thing on the dial, which I think is spectacular. It's on both dials, but because you've got the black um, dial with the really sort of the gray that it's really hard to see, you can't notice it as well. But on the beige dial, you've got the H3 and you've got the radioactive symbol because there's a tiniest bit of radium in here for the loom. Somewhat gimmicky. <laughs> But I love it anyway, and you know, Christo fully admits that, but there you go. Hopefully that's come up. The loom is actually pretty spectacular on these watches. You know, technically it's a radioactive watch. <laughs> um, so it kind of adds to the, the appeal of it in my view, but yeah, so I love that. I just absolutely adore that. Here we go. But yeah, the loom on these things is great. It looks, it looks really spectacular. They've done an absolutely bang up job with these. So I want to talk about this collaboration so, because I think particularly in this country and uh, you know, we have, we have veterans. I don't think like most countries, they probably get looked after once they finish um, serving. And so, you know, Aaron, for example, has taken it somewhat upon himself to, to give back a little bit in, in this regard. And I think it's such a great um, project. And 10% uh, of the sales of these particular collabor collaboration watches go to um, charities that deal with helping veterans. Now I've got uh, a couple of the names here. So the Sabbat Foundation and MVP, which I think is Merger Veterans Players. Um, and it's, and they're organizations that in their own way help veterans sort of reintegrate into society or, you know, because if you think about it, these people join the army, they've been going to war uh, and then they've been coming back like five years, 10 years later and then they come back into society after fighting a war that no one else really has any concept of, really, because we sit at home and live our privileged lives. And we've all gone off and gone to school and gotten jobs and had careers and had families, and these people don't have that um, because war skills are not necessarily easily transferable. So um, there are organizations out there that are trying to help veterans you know find their skill get a job make them feel like they're a valuable contributor to society notwithstanding they've contributed in so many other ways in the past so that's again why I love this watch because I think I'm as I said in the fears video like I love a good story love a good narrative um, and this definitely has that I mean this brand in general has that with their love of the earth and Australian, um, the Australian sort of setting, but to then sort of take it to the next step and go, let's do something with the military and give back in that way. I love that. Uh, and the story behind that and how that came about and why that came about, I think is really great and it's important. And I think the watch itself is a great representation of that. Uh, it's, I mean, I don't know, like, this just gives me, in a good way, in a good way, very strong, uh, you know, khaki field vibes. And I love that watch from, from afar because I actually haven't ever been able to get my hands on that watch. I can't find it here. Um, someone somewhere will have it in their collection and will hopefully bring it to a little gathering when we have one and I can have a look at it. But who needs it when you've got, when you've got this, <laughs> honestly, I mean, this to me screams tool watch, just simple, you know, tip what a field watch should be. It's 
it is a tool watch. That is their purpose. Um, it's clear from this what this purpose is. It's to tell the time out in the field, in the middle of a war, and do that job. And I think it's going to do that job very, very well. Um, I'm going to give a high five and full kudos to the boys for coming up with it and designing this watch for that purpose. Um, you should check out Bozell if you haven't. They've just updated their website actually. It looks very, very cool. Uh, I appreciate them lending me these watches. As I said, they've got another watch collection which is linked to this one called the Sydney Diver where one of the divers is, is also a collaboration with the US Army. Uh, and I'll talk about that more in that video, but they are kind of like a little series, if I can call it that. That's my word, not necessarily their term. Uh, and, you know, it's a totally different watch in the sense of um, Christo's been able to play around a little bit more with like the, the thickness and the design and sort of how that works. But at its essence, um, it's got that military feel to it, which I quite like. But yeah, I mean, I'd love if anyone out there has seen this watch uh, in the flesh, let me know. Also, if you own another um, model from Bozell, let me know because uh, the other one that I really love, which is not available anymore, is the Ocean Moon. I was eyeing that off for a really long time. I think that looks fabulous. Uh, and yeah, until next time, Again, thank you to the guys at Borzell for being so kind. It was great. I went in yesterday to visit Christo. He's like, we're having a good old chat about watches. He's like, which ones would you like? I'm like, could I have all of them? And he's like, okay. Um, yeah, I think, you know, it's hard work putting any business together, any brand, any product, um, and then layer in a watch business or a watch company. And it's just, you know, I think it's, the multiplier of difficulty goes up so much. Um, he prides himself on getting great components uh, and building these watches that way uh, and keeping them at a really affordable price point. I mean, these watches are a thousand Australian, which I think is exceptionally reasonable for the quality that goes into them, the build, and also, um, you know, the love, the love of it all. I think there's gotta be a bit of a premium for love. Um, <laughs> Yeah, let me know what you think. As always, thank you, like, subscribe, do all these things that, you know, YouTube insists that you do. And until next time, have an awesome week.